Redstone can be used in infinitely many ways. You have people that build doors, self-building bridges, even a walking house. But when you use redstone for computation, numbers become super important. Almost any huge build is going to require at least some calculations. Numbers become almost impossible to avoid. Which begs the question, how should you handle numbers with redstone? Well, over the years, people have figured out many different ways to do it, but only two main ways have stuck around and become popular, binary and hexadecimal. Today, I want to show you a ton of useful circuits involving binary and hexadecimal, because sometimes they can be hard to find and they're really cool. If you're brand new to binary and hex, don't worry, I have a video right here which explains them in detail. But as a quick summary, we use a counting system called base 10, or decimal, because there's 10 different digits and every place value to the left gets 10 times more valuable. Binary is base 2, so there are two digits you can use, 0 and 1, and every place value to the left gets 2 times more valuable. So instead of a 1's place, 10's place, 100's place like we're used to in decimal, binary has a 1's place, 2's place, 4's place, and so on. Hexadecimal is base 16, so there's 16 different digits you can use, 0 through 9, and then A, B, C, D, E, F, and every place value gets 16 times bigger. Base 2 and base 16 are just another two ways to write numbers, and even though you might not be used to them, they're just as valid as any other system. So why did binary and hex become popular for redstone? The truth is, these number systems have the most similarities to how redstone behaves, which just makes them the easiest to use, and that's all there is to it. But what does that mean? How does redstone behave like binary and hex? Well, redstone dust has two states, on or off. This is perfect for binary because every digit in binary also has two states. 0 or 1. If I want to represent the number 9 with redstone, I could represent it in binary as 1001. But if you pay attention to redstone's signal strength values, it's a different story. You see, all redstone dust tiles have a power level associated with them, which is an integer from 0 to 15. This is perfect for hexadecimal because every hexadecimal digit is also an integer from 0 to 15, as long as you think of A as 10, B as 11, all the way to F as 15. Alright, now that we know what binary and hex are and why we use them, let's get into these circuits. Let's start with transmission or sending data from one spot to another. Binary transmission is really fast because you can just use a repeater to repeat a zero or one. To get a little bit of extra length out of your wires, you can use a block behind the repeater and a block in front of the repeater as well. If a repeater is too slow for you, it is possible to use an instant repeater. But for technical reasons, I highly recommend staying away from that and just speeding up your game with carpet mod instead. If you want to transmit lots of binary, you have two options. You can do it the easy way and just make a bunch of wires for every bit you want to send, or you can reuse the same wire by sending the bits serially or one after the other. This is a serial transmitter I made which uses just one wire to send 8 bits of binary from one place to another. So if we input this pattern of zeros and ones and we press this button, it sends that pattern over to the receiver and we can see the exact same pattern showed up here over just one wire. That's pretty cool. Hexadecimal transmission gets a little bit more interesting. We can't use a repeater anymore because now we care about signal strength. That's what hexadecimal is. The most intuitive way to transmit hex is with a comparator line since comparators preserve signal strength. Again, you can get some extra length out of it by adding in some blocks, but this is still really slow. About four four times slower than a repeater line. So is that it? Is hex transmission just slower by nature? Well, 10 years ago, Cube Hamster found a way to transmit hex signals a bit faster. Oh my gosh, 10 years already? There's no way, right? It's really clever. It uses the distance that signal strength travels to its advantage. For example, if you input a four here, it travels one, two, three, four blocks before it dies. Therefore, the fourth repeater will be the last repeater to output a 15 before it starts decaying on the other side. Since the length of the mechanism is 15 blocks long and it's already traveled four blocks, it'll decay for 11 more blocks, and 15 minus 11 puts it back to a 4. Or if you put in a 7, now the 7th repeater is the last one to receive full power. It decays for 8 more blocks, putting it back to a 7. Then you can just repeat this setup as many times as you want. This method is only twice as slow as a normal repeater line, which is pretty good for hex, but still not as good as repeaters, huh? Well, what if I told you there's a way to transmit hex with repeaters? Yeah, I didn't believe it either, but it's true. Using this circuit right here, which is designed by Mizuma Games, you can send a hex signal over a repeater line. For example, I can input a 3 and press this button and we get a 3 on the other side. The way this works is by using pulse length. For example, a 5 gets sent as a 5 tick pulse, and a 15 gets sent as a 15 tick pulse. The receiver can then figure out which hex digit you sent by seeing how long the pulse is. Now, this isn't better in every way, because now we're waiting up to 15 ticks in between sending signals, whereas before that was not the case. But if you really, really need that repeater speed between the sender and the receiver, you can do it, which I think is pretty cool. Next up, conversion. Since 2 and 16 are both powers of 2, the conversion from binary to hex or hex to binary is not that bad. Every 4 bits of binary is exactly representative of one hex digit, since they both store numbers from 0 to 15. So what's this binary number in hex? Well, just split it into groups of 4. The first group is a 9, and the second group is 10, or A. So this number in hex is just 9A. Therefore, all we need to convert binary to hex is something that takes a 4-bit binary number as input and outputs the correct hex value for it. Then we can just reuse that circuit for however big our number is. The most intuitive way to build that circuit is like this. Here's the 4-bit binary number input, 8, 4, 2, and 1 
one. And whenever you turn on a bit, it just adds its value in signal strength to the total. For example, if I turn on the four and the one, it literally adds four plus one and gives you an output of five. This works, but it's not synchronized and I think we can do a little bit better. If you input the binary number vertically, you can use a double-sided decoder to just decode for all the hex values manually. This is synchronized and it's super fast, only two ticks. For example, if I input eight, eight gets decoded for, as you can see by this torch that turned on, and it goes all the way down to eight on the end right here. Or if I input a three, the three gets decoded for, and it decays all the way down to a three. If you don't like vertical, but you still want that juicy two ticks, well, I made a horizontal version as well. The input's right here, and if we input a four, we get a four on this glass. Now let's go the other way, hex to binary. The most intuitive way to do hex to binary is with subtraction. Let me show you what I mean. Start with any hex value, 13 for example, and try to subtract eight. You can, so 13's eight bit must be a one. Subtract that eight from 13, and now we have five left over. Then try to subtract four. You can once again, so 13's four bit must be a one as well. Try to subtract two, and you can, so 13's two bit must be a zero. And finally, you can subtract one, making 13's one bit a one. And just like that, you've deduced that 13 must be one one zero one in binary and here's the circuit that does just that i'll put in 13 and one one zero one but once again this is not synchronized and i feel like we can do better with the decoder this is a hex to binary design which decodes the hex directly if we put in a 13 we get one one zero one in just two ticks pretty cool and of course if you want to see it in detail or play around with any of these circuits yourself there's a world download in the description so now we can convert any size binary number to hex or any size hex number to binary in just two ticks that is amazing for just redstone last but not least arithmetic. Numbers wouldn't have their charm without arithmetic, right? Binary arithmetic can be done in many different ways depending on what arithmetic you're trying to do. A good starting place for learning about arithmetic is addition because you can build off of addition to create other operations as well. The arguably best binary adder is called a carry cancel adder which I've covered in this video right here. This is my original design from the tutorial. You can add any two numbers such as I don't know five and three and there you go eight. My design takes five ticks from input to output, but these things have been hyper optimized over the years. And now people are making versions that are as fast as three ticks, such as this one right here, which was built by Don. And like I said, once you have an adder, you can create other operations with them, which is really cool. You can make subtractors, multipliers, dividers, even square root extractors, all from just carry cancel adders. And I have a separate in-depth video for all of those devices in my Logical Redstone series. Check it out if you're interested. You can also use adders to create an ALU, which stands for Arithmetic Logic Unit. An ALU can still do addition, but it also has a ton of other logic options operations that make it super useful. It's kind of like an all-in-one arithmetic machine, and it's usually the heart of computation in a CPU. Over in Hex World, you can also make hex adders. This is a hex carry cancel adder designed by Yellow Bunny. If you're interested in how it works or how to build it, go check out his video. I'll put it in the description. But on a high level, it just adds hex numbers. If you put in 4, 5, and 6, 7, you get an answer of A, C. So 4, 5 plus 6, 7 in hexadecimal is AC. I don't tend to use any other operations for hex, but they're totally possible since you can use this adder as a base. But if you want to do some simple hex arithmetic, such as maybe adding one and subtracting one, I do have a circuit for you. This is a hex incrementer and decrementer. Right now we have 11 in the circuit. If you press decrement, it goes down to 10. If you press increment, it goes back up to 11. Both pairs of droppers are facing into each other. This one is full of items. This one's empty empty items. And this guy is a super small equality checker. For example, if I put in two and three, the lamp doesn't go off. But if I make them both two, the lamp goes off because the signal strengths are the same. Pretty cool. So which number system is better? Which one should you use? Well, I hate to give you this answer, but it's true and it's a very common answer in computer science. It depends. If you want to simulate a real life circuit like a basic CPU or a calculator and you don't care about the size, then binary is the way to go. But if you find a scenario that benefits from the compactness of hex, it can still be really useful. In 2048, for example, I chose to represent each tile as a single hex value rather than a binary number because moving a board of signal strengths around is less of a headache than moving a board of binary numbers around. It really just depends on what you're making. But no matter what you're working on. I hope this video and these circuits I've shown off were useful to you or at least a little bit interesting. If you like this video, subscribe. I've got big plans for this summer. I hope you learned something. I hope you enjoyed. Peace out guys.